Hey everyone and welcome back to Upper Left RC. Today we're finally doing it. We're starting a new course. I have two already built. I decided I needed to build a third one. I'm going to make a video on how I do mine, show you guys the steps. I'll probably make this a two or three part series depending on how long it takes and how long the footage is. But um, these are the basic materials I used for both of my courses. Uh, this right here is uh, plaster cloth. It's really foldable, moldable. It's great. Comes in these big rolls. I've got quite a few. One, two, three, four, five, ten rolls in here, and a couple more packs if I need some. But this stuff's great. You just dip it in water. I'll get a big pan of water, run a piece through, drape it over whatever you want, and then let it smooth it out and let it harden. And uh, it becomes a really neat texture that's really good for crawling, and you can basically cover anything with it. Um, I also have one more thing grab this stuff so i have a big old roll of i believe this is called butcher paper or construction paper um really awesome stuff my first course i ever built um this was really handy because you just take a big old pile of it ball it up into a ball throw it down and drape some cloth over it becomes the perfect hill bump mountain whatever you need so i'll be using some of this too probably Lots of expanding foam. I've got, this is the stuff I used for my second course, the one that I show most often. Um, the gray one, great stuff, gaps and cracks. Nice and simple, comes with a cool little nozzle. So I got some of that, and then I also had some of this. You can tell from the dust, it's pretty old. Um, found this out in my shop. I'm gonna try some of this out as well. I believe these are the same. They look a little different, but should be the same effect, so. We'll use up this as well. Got some super glue. You never know when you're gonna need super glue. I used that on my second course to glue down all the moss. Um, it's still not holding all of it, but this stuff works great. Any kind of super glue doesn't have to be gel like that. And then of course paint. So white and black are really good base coats. When you're painting over stuff, I've got some of this uh, lightly textured Rust-Oleum multicolor textured paint. Um, it comes out a little more gray than this, but it gives it a nice texture. And then this stuff, the stone paint is the coolest stuff in the world to use on these little courses because it's super textured. If you go to the store, you can feel the caps. They've got exactly what it feels like when it dries. So I'm gonna use a lot of this too. And that's how I get that rock look and that great texture to crawl on to get a lot of grip. So these are the basic materials. Let's clear off this thing and start turning this into a new course to run on. Okay, so last time I did a course, I didn't have a plan. I just kind of winged it and I'm really happy with the result I got, but this time I wanted to plan one out and see if I could get it to look anything like what I want it to look like in my head when I'm done. So I'm going to draw out some plans here. Please forgive me. I am not an artist. <laughs> it's not going to look good, but what I'd like to do, at least from the side, if this is the board that we're building on, um, I know I want to have some sort of structural bridge but I want to do it all out of foam so that it looks like maybe it's just a rock bridge so somewhere on the course here I'd like to have an archway bridge out of foam and uh, I got to make sure I make it tall enough to get the trucks under so I can drive under it and of course over it um, I want to have kind of like a spiral climbing hill maybe we'll do that down at this end something that you know, as you go up the top, you kind of have to go around the mountain to get to the top of it. Maybe make it big enough to try and turn around. The limited thing on these is space. This is a two foot by four foot piece of board. It fits in my room well. I can get it out the door on its side and I can, you know, move them around if I need to. They're very mobile and they're very, very fun to play on. But I want to make sure that I build something that's also big enough for the cars. Um, the first one I built, actually we'll go take a look at it. So the first course I built back here, this one, I built that mountain on the corner because I thought it would look cool, but I realized I can climb to the top of it and then back down. It's too steep to side hill on and it's not big enough at the top to turn around on. And this bridge I built on this one as well. The cars, I didn't measure, so I had to flip the light bar on my uh, axial deadbolt, which I've talked about in another video. I had to flip it upside down just so it fits under those uh, wooden dowels there. 
for the bridge. So it, it wasn't thought out too much. I just kind of started building stuff to see what I thought looked cool. On this course here, um, this was actually just a giant mountain of foam. I carved this out. I carved some of this out and then retextured it with some more um, foam and then left a pit down here. Originally, I wanted to be able to climb up the backside over the top and over, but it became too steep and there wasn't enough room to actually get the truck back here and turned without doing about a 30 point turn to get up and over it. So I gotta, or at least want to at this time, make sure that I have enough room to maneuver around the obstacles. You know, this, this course is a lot of fun. It's really cool. But when I designed it, especially down here at the bottom, this thing, over on this corner, I can go up this and turn and come across here, and I can go across here, but turning to get back down, there's not much room. They don't have a great turning radius. So I need to really plan out something and make some space. I think I'm gonna keep this one a little simpler. I like the design I have so far, which looks terrible, but this is mountain, spiral mountain. This is stone. <laughs> bridge. I can't believe people are actually going to see my terrible handwriting online. But that's kind of what I have in mind. I want to do a big mountain that you can drive up the edges to the top, turn around and go back down it on one end. And on the other end, I want to make a really cool, natural looking bridge that I can drive under and over. So I'll probably have to do it at a slight angle. I'm thinking somewhere in here where I can get up and over both sides and have room to turn and go underneath and back around it. All right, so using the Kyosho because it's the widest RC I have right now out of these scale sized trucks, um, I wanna make sure that I have room to get around the backside of this bridge to go under it and to make it around all the way around if I wanna drive around it. So I used it as an example to make sure that I had enough room on all sides to be able to get by it. So I'm thinking the bridge will go right here. And then over here on this end is where I want to make, I thought about it and I don't know if it's going to spiral, but I think I can at least do 180 degrees to get to the top and back. So I'm thinking if we do the top of the platform, the top of the mountain, somewhere around here, it's just not going to have much room to turn around. Um, okay, I've been scribbling on the board here. so. If the Kyosho or one of my trucks can fit along here, I can start the incline here, or at least this is my thought process, and go up. I, do, I don't need to be able to drive around it. This will just be one section where I can go up, is kind of what I'm thinking, and then maybe back down as an exit, and then also have one that curls up to the top. Yes, I might not be able to turn a truck around without doing a 30 point turn, but I think it's gonna look cool. So if I can get the truck around, the outside raised and then either go down or keep going up that might be pretty cool as well or do I make the mountain also part of the bridge as a structure so I can go under up and then over do it hmm so if I can go around and exit and then I can go also up and around and over and make the bridge opening right about here. That might look pretty cool too, which gives me a lot more space to do more at the other end. I think that might be what we do. I like that now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, that's what I think I'm gonna do. I don't know how much of this I'm gonna leave in the video, if any. So if you're seeing this, I decided to be lazy and I didn't wanna edit it all. Let's start with a good base layer of foam maybe yeah i think that's where we're gonna start okay i'll see you in a second all right so i'm gonna start with the foam i've never used this brand of foam but we're gonna see how it goes So I don't think I would recommend this Loctite type foam. Um, so far, it's really hard to use. This, I think, is the entire can's worth, which is not great. Um, 
yeah, it smells really bad, really chemically. Probably not great to be doing in a room, but at least I have my window open all the way. So I'm gonna move on to the stuff that I know that works, that I've used before, and we'll just keep going. Okay, I got the other can open, shaken up, let's go. Okay, so we got two layers in the middle, a layer of this on the side. I'm gonna let it expand and set for a little bit. I think this stuff dries, mm, I'll take a look at it. I think it was like 15 minutes or something and it starts to dry on the outside, but the insides take up to 24 hours to fully cure. Um, I'd say after about 30 minutes to an hour, it's stiff enough at least to be able to put another layer on it. Um, or at least that's my experience in the past. So we're gonna let this sit for a while and uh, cure up. Let's get a lower shot at it and then we can see how much it expanded after a while. So right now, that's what we're, uh, that's what we're dealing with. And I will come back once it's cured and we'll take a look and see how much it expanded. All right, as you can see, it has dried up a bit and expanded a bit as well, so I think we're ready for another coat. Let's shake this bad boy up real quick. And let's work our way up. So it looks like that's the end of the first can. Um, we're gonna go ahead and let that set and dry. And I think that's gonna be part one for now. Um, we've got a few more cans of this to go, a few design plans to decide on, but so far it's coming along great. So we'll see you in the next video.